Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys, good morning. I will make my video and its problem is minimum penalty for a shop. Uh, it's a simple standard problem. If you just try bit by yourself how to optimize it, we have seen such kind of optimizations previously. Also, but yeah, let's quickly see this problem. Uh, it says uh, that I'm having a customer visit log uh, and it's an index array. Uh, consisting of characters 0 and oh, sorry, n and y. Now, an i character, if it is y, it means that the customer come at the i -th r, right? And if it is n, which means that customer, uh, that no customer came at the i -th r. Now, I have the shop open for the JRs, which means 0 to n, right? It is, let's suppose if I say n as 4, so it is open 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4th r. Cool. Now, um, it just says for every hour when the shop is open, no customer come, the penalty increase by one, which means shop is open. Let's say I have uh, my shop as, I, ju I just say, okay, it is open up till this hour. So every time the shop is open and no customer came, which means N is here. So I will get a, I will get a penalty for it. So for the N, if it is closed here, for the N, which is coming before, I will get a penalty for it. And for the Y, which is coming after, after it is closed, I will get a penalty for it, which means uh, shop is closed, but still a customer came. Then I will get a penalty. Shop is not not closed, but no one is coming. Then I get a penalty. So it is what will affect my penalty. That is what it is saying in these two things. That for close time, if n is coming pre uh, previously, then it will incur penalty. Afterwards, by coming, then it will incur penalty. Now return the earliest R. Afterwards, earliest R. Um, at which the shop must be closed to incur a minimum penalty. So we have to define or get the minimum R or the earliest R to get the minimum penalty. Now, just get the first example and say that's pretty much sufficient. So we saw one thing that, okay, if the shop is closed at this particular R, which is saying the first, second and third R, because the zero R is this, first R is this, second R is this, third R is this. If let's say, imagine I say the shop is closed at this third hour, then I'm only concerned about number of ends, which are happened previously, which means up till this point, I want number of ends. And also see one basic thing is I go on to every of such point and I'll ask, hey, hey bro, um, give me number of ends up till here and give me number of y's up till here. Then I'll go again at this point, give, hey bro, give me n up till here, give me y up till here. Again, I go, hey bro, at this point, give me n up till here and y up till here. So I can go on and compute the previous n's and previous y's again and again, but I cannot do it for every of my n. Why? Because n is itself one if I, so for every n, which means for every one if I, I will go and compute prefix and suffix that will again cost one if I. So I would not do that and it's not possible. So I have to find something that I would be able to find in O of one time, what is the prefix? And because for sure, I will have to go at every point to see, okay, at which R I incur the minimum penalty. But I also need to compute, okay, in O of one time, give me what is the prefix sum, what is the suffix sum. And that's how you know that what's going what's to apply here. We're going to apply simple prefix sum because what we know and what we want is, okay, number of n's which have occurred previously and number of y's which are, which are after me. So at this point, I'm just only concerned about number of n's up to this point and number of y's up to this point because that will be my penalty. Number of n's you can see here are one. Number of y's up till here you are, you can see it is one. So, okay, the penalty, if I close at this point, which is at a third hour, it will be nothing but two. Why, why, why? If I close at this point, at this point, so number of n's up till here is zero. Number of y's up till here is actually a one. So if I close at this second hour, number of the penalty will be simply a one so that's how what i need is simply a prefix sum why you saw because we wanted something of the prefix uh sort of sum and also we wanted the suffix sort of sum so we will need that and we will just pre-compute that before actually going on to every indexing and final prefix sum. so that is uh, one thing which you got to know that uh, ultimately i'm just concerned about the left ends sorry which means up to this point ends and up to this point r or the y's so simply get them by using a prefix sum and whatsoever at any point, at any point, you know that what I was doing, prefix sum, whatsoever is there, suffix sum, whatsoever was there, whereas the prefix sum, I'm only computing n sum, for a suffix, I'm only computing y sum. So I just get the sum of my prefix plus suffix and that's my actual, actual sum 
and I'll just compute it for every of the R, which means I compute it for the zero R, first R, second R, third R, and whichever is giving me the minimum sum, that R is my best R. Cool. Uh, let's quickly have a dry run. Very quick, very fast. For, for a zero R, one R, second R, third R, fourth R, I have to make an array. Now for that array itself, I know that okay, N up till here is actually nothing but zero because it has, it has not even started. So for sure, N is zero. Here, I will just say, okay, N is here. No, it is not here. Okay, why is here? Oh, N is here. No, it is not here. So I'm just carry forwarding it. Cool. N is here. If you don't know prefix sum as a concept at any point of time, I can get to know what is the sum up to the previous indexes. So N is here. Okay, yeah, I found here. Cool. N is here. No, it is not there. It is, if, it, if it was there, just get the previous value and add a plus one. Okay. Now, here it, it was not there, but still, I will carry forward the previous value. That is how a prefix sum works. Now, for sure, I also need to have a suffix sum, but that needs to be off by. So again, nothing was here. So initially started from zero. Now, as it go on to the, now, to compute the suffix sum, you should know that what I am doing. At this point, okay, got it. I got a one. So get from previous zero value, add a one because y is there and I have wanted a y. I'm, I'm computing for y itself. Oh, add a plus one. Here I, I carry forward it. It's a y. No, it's not. Okay, add a zero. Cool. Carry forward it. It's a y. Um, no. Yeah, it is. Cool. Add a one. Got a two. Cool. Carry forward it. I, I have a two. It's a y. Yeah. Good. Add a one. Cool. I get a three. So that's how my array is. But you see that if I want, no. It is, you see, it is how the array is made. And I have written exactly same below these points, which means for the zero tar. I can also assume it as the fifth tar. Although it is not there, but yeah, you can assume that. But if I want to compute for, let's say, the second R, then what I need is, I need for the second R, I need N up till this point and also Y up till here, which means I will get the, oh, sorry, I will get the value for the, for the n, for the n, number of n's, I'll get this value because I want to compute up to the second r. I'll get the n's up to this point and for the y, I'll get it from the just next one, which is this one. But, um, so either I can make an array of size this and for sure I will have another array of y, but I will also place something, let's say here, a zero. So I'll have to make another array and I have to get, okay, for the i and r, let's say, I will get for n number of n's, I get n of i, but for number of y's, I have to get a y of i plus one. That's simple. So always it's y, y of i plus one. So why not shift this entire thing to left? So that it starts from itself. So rather than I, I'll get I. So here currently for I, I'm getting I plus one for Y. If I just everything shift it to left. So for this particular I, I get I itself. So it's just to actually make the code a bit easier. But still, if you feel like like this, make an array like this, make an array of N like this, make an array of Y like this, but make sure, okay, you have a starting zero in your Y and have an ending zero in your n and that would actually help you to actually say okay for the second r get n of i n of i and for the y i should get a y of i plus one and that's how you can go on from zero to fourth r zero to fourth r because that's what you want but we just can shift that thing entirely to the left so three two one one zero will become now you will see that three is nothing but here itself right so again, for the second R, now I can get the value here and here itself because I've shifted it entirely to the left. So for the second R, the sum or the H, which means the cost at the H R is nothing but one itself. Now, if I ask you the cost at the third R, which means number of N's up to this point, which is actually a one and number of Y's up to this point, which is actually a one again. So cost is nothing but two. So cost up to the H R is actually a two. And that's how I can simply compute this H. And with this H, whatsoever point will give me the minimum, minimum H first. That's going to be my answer. So I got my one as the minimum value and that came. Although one is also occurring at the fourth, fourth R. But for sure, I want the earliest R. That is the second R. Second R earliest value is for the minimum H we have got. And that's how you can simply get it solved. So it's simply just making this prefix sum of N, the suffix sum of Y. Just making sure, okay, that you are making like this. Now, that's, a, that, that's the main thing. 
logically you understand why n of y and y of i plus one but you actually will code it as if that okay it's below it and uh, you can just use n of i and y of i itself cool let's see the code uh firstly i we have our y and n array uh as you saw above also that initially to start off uh we pushed in a zero and a zero you saw above right a zero and a zero was here right so just simply push it now why i'm actually making it from zero which means uh and i will make it as okay i and i'll make it as from starting itself why also i'll make it from starting so why i'll make it as zero one one two three in end i will reverse it to make a three two one one zero or you can see there are many implementation stuffs for this you can simply implement it any way whatsoever you want you can also implement as okay y of i equal to y of i plus one plus one like this also uh, y of i equal to y of i plus one like this which means or you can also use a count to actually use the count and moving that count forward anyway there are multiple ways to implement this now to get the n uh, firstly i will just go on and see if it is n increase the count and basically push this count value just simply saying if it is a n then increase the count increase the count okay now increase the count now pushing that in my n vector now the same i will do for y uh, it's just that y it needs to be computed in reverse order so y i will see okay initially i have pushed in a zero i i got a y okay increase the count increase the count to one now push this vector in y so y is being made like one zero zero one one two three like this ultimately i will reverse this in the end so ultimately i'll reverse this and then i'll get a reversed y now i will just have uh to get the minimum of my h as i showed you h is nothing but the sum of those two but y and y and n and y is, and both are c both are actually i i because we we know that how we actually computed that above now simply whatsoever h is minimum get that index and that will be the minimum r minimum r right because it is the zero tar first tar second tar third tar fourth tar that would be the minimum r and that's how you can simply get it solved so again you saw the time procedure will be o of n where you're simply doing a perfect sum and suffix sum uh space also o of n because you are also using a perfect sum and suffix sum array can you optimize it yes we can very easily and that's it that is a very standard concept which you have learned and if you have not learned it's good to actually learn this because it's not used a lot to actually compute anything in the prefix part anything in the suffix part just be computed and then solve the actual question moving on to all the indexes now again coming back that if what we were doing like we have to optimize it now optimize as in we cannot optimize in time because we have to always go on to every index to actually check uh that what all ends are previously and what are y's were next but if you saw that we are using a prefix array, uh is it possible that we won't use this array and you can just simply solve it without using any space at all yeah it is because you saw in prefix sum and suffix sum what ultimately you are concerned of see ultimately you are concerned of if my shop is closed at this point of time here i'm concerned about the number of y's i was concerned of but ultimately i want number of y's to be as minimum as possible and number of n's should be as maximum as possible if that is the case then okay it's very good to close at that point right or i can also say the same thing as number of n's in starting part should be as minimum as possible and number of y should be as maximum as possible whatsoever the point if i go on from starting whatsoever is the point where number of y's is as max as possible and number of uh number of n's is as minimum as possible it's best to close at that point now simply as i'm going on from left to right and i want to get a point where number of y's is maximum number of n's is minimum now i cannot just blindly say okay what is that point so i need to just start computing that now to start computing that particular stuff i just need to know okay number of y's is maximum and number of n's is minimum so i can give that a uh, point okay why if i encounter a y i will get a plus one i add a plus one for encountering a n i add a minus one so i want this sum now why i did a plus one for y because i'm concerned about it should be high i'm concerned about it should be low it, it should be as minimum as possible so i want this sum this sum of y y is into plus one plus one plus n's into n's into minus one i want this sum to be as max as possible why so that if this sum is as max as possible the sum is as max as possible which means i will have the maximum my y's and minimum n's so i will just simply go on from left right compute this particular sum and see 
at what point this sum is as max as possible if this sum or the score is as max as possible okay that point or that index will be our actual r cool so ultimately i can go on from left to right i go on from left to right i simply have my score for score i add a plus one for n i'll add a minus one now i want okay at what r is the maximum at what r is the maximum or what at what index is the maximum sum so i'll just simply say okay at this correct index i and see here i'm going on from i equal to from 0 to n because you know i know that uh, r s is for uh, only y y n y which is 0 1 2 and 3 it's of three indexes itself so going on from 0 to n itself getting the score if it is less than maximum score update the maximum score and also update the index so this index will give me the maximum index for maximum oh sorry it will give me the first index first index for the maximum score first index for the maximum score okay i've got the first index for the maximum score now i will simply return the index plus one again why because i am saying saying index is zero but actually it is the first r index is one actually this is second r right if let's say my score never even my score never even came up so it will indexing will be minus one adding a plus one will give me the zero r. so that's how you can simply get it solved because you know ultimately what you're concerned about is getting the maximum y and minimum n maximum y get uh, assigning a plus one score to that minimum minimum n okay assign the minus, minus one score to that now the sum should be as max as possible which will incur that okay y is as max and n are as min as possible cool and with that you can simply use a no space at all and split the answer cool code is on this thank you so much for watching bye bye